Well, it seems like everyone who is supposed to join is already on, on this uh, live training call, which is really cool. Thanks everyone for being here on time. Uh, this is Michael here. Most likely you've uh, seen me already on one of the videos at Geek Culture. I'm, I'm here to, uh, to welcome you and to introduce uh, the first uh, training session, which is, um, which is a sort of an introductory session. This is a kickoff, um, a kickoff session. Plus, um, we will look at um, how can you become a great um, IT recruiter. We are going to look at the training plan we have uh, prepared for you. And we will also look at um, a few job descriptions that um, uh, you, you know, this, this is something you will see um, very helpful and uh, you can implement uh, immediately uh, in, in your job. So um, let me first look at um, the, the chat window. Uh, you guys uh, may see here on Zoom on the bottom, there is a chat button. As soon as you click it um, on the right, there should be a sidebar with, uh, with, with a chat um, to chat sidebar where you can uh, actually type something. So I would encourage you now to at least give it a try to, to um, say hi. I'll say hi to you all. Hi everyone. Uh, so you can at least see mine and um, oh yeah, I can see the first already. Hey, hello. Cool. Great to see you. Great to see you here. Um, you can also ask questions here directly. Um, if, uh, if you have a question related to this training or whatever I talk about from time to time, I'll just look uh, here and I'm super happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, this is actually a huge advantage of these uh, live sessions. You can ask anything and then it's either me or some of the other IT instructors, they will respond to your questions. It's pretty, pretty cool, isn't it? So uh, let me, let me just um, briefly, in oh, hey, hello, hi again. Let me just briefly introduce you at the, at the training plan we have uh, prepared for you. So uh, I'll also share my screen from time to time. All right. So um, I'll just do it now. So hold on. I'll do it right away. Share and this, this screen. So here you can see how, how do we even think about the, the steps and the progression? You can see some of the modules like uh, GR, 10X, 20X, 30X, 40X. These, these are different, uh, different levels. Um, say, we, we look at, um, um, at IT recruiters usually um, for, from different angles. Like first you need to have a solid technical foundation. This is actually one of the reasons why we have uh, even started the Geekotry Academy. Like you need to understand some of the technical terms. And um, hence we've, uh, we've uh, prepared a series of, uh, of training courses that actually teach you this, this foundation. And the second, you can see here the second step, GR20X. So those are the courses 201, 202 where we focus on recruitment basics, like IT recruitment basics. Like obviously many of you have already been in recruitment. Maybe you focused on different positions, uh, non-IT, and now you're transitioning to IT. This is actually fairly common. Um, so, uh, so we focus on IT recruitment basics. Um, I'll, I'll talk about it uh, in a while. And these, these, two, these two steps are included in this onboarding accelerator. In this training program, the, the 10 modules are precisely what we will be talking about in the next uh, 20 weeks. Second, you can see also uh, the two steps um, that are suitable for seniors and we will cover them in a while. So now let's, uh, let's dive a, a little deeper. The modules are GR10X. So say 101, introduction to IT recruitment. I will cover some of those topics um, in a while. Second, organizational design and digital teams. Here, well, I'm often surprised um, recruiters who are two, three years uh, already in, in IT recruitment, they still don't know what's the difference between product 
and engineering teams. So uh, we, we look at it from a high level and explain these terms. What is, what is the difference between a functional uh, organizational structure versus divisional organization structure? How the technical teams are organized? And we also look at, uh, for example, um, agile, agile teams. Um, like um, you may have already heard about Spotify or Netflix, the team structure that is, um, that, that is often, uh, say, say, innovative. Uh, they even call it uh, squads and tribes and uh, chapters. There are tribe leads, uh, chapter leads, um, product owners. Uh, they also have guilds as a part of this structure. So, so uh, we try to explain this, uh, this uh, new digital team roles in a, in a human language. Next, you can see here the third, a third um, square or the third module uh, focuses on software development lifecycle and methodologies. I think it's, it's uh, very beneficial for you as IT recruiters to understand what are the differences between uh, waterfall and agile. Agile methodologies such as Kanban and Scrum. What are the differences? What are some of the scrum roles like um, product owner or scrum master like this is something you guys need to know even if you wake up uh, at midnight and then we will go we'll go a little further we focus on software developers so even if we if i take a step back you, you can see how this all relates at first we look at uh, the organizational team structure uh, technical teams how technical teams are organized what are some of the roles by roles i mean for example um, the difference between a UX designer and UI designer, product manager, project manager, um, business analyst, system analyst, like these, these technical roles that are often confusing uh, for people who have never worked in IT. And then we will, we will zoom in and um, we will talk about software developers uh, only. Okay, so this is one module, software developers. What kind of language do they use? What, uh, what frameworks do do they use uh, which frameworks are new which frameworks are trending uh, etc like this is this is everything you need to know and uh, we have uh, also prepared this uh, uh, technology map you will be able to download uh, this uh, PDF and print it out and I would strongly encourage you to do so because only then you can you can really learn so here we have uh, different languages and their frameworks so for example, JavaScript as a programming language, and then frameworks, no, no, well, Node.js is not really a framework, it's a, rather a runtime environment, but say Angular, Vue.js, Ember, React, React Native, etc. Say PHP, some of them are trending, like Laravel and Symfony, some of them are already fading out, like Y or Zen, like this, this is everything you guys need to know, and we will, talk about it as a part of this great training program. So I'm, I'm really happy you are here, you are here with us. As soon as you have any question, then uh, please uh, go ahead and ask in the chat, all right? Next module focuses on technical stacks, uh, servers, cloud, storage. We call these repositories, uh, GitHub, for example, a Bitbucket, GitLab, technical stacks like uh, uh, LAMP or MEAN, you know, this Linux, Apache, MySQL, um, Mongo, like means, um, well, I, I'll not go into details, but uh, you need to know about these technical stacks also and what are some of the most popular ones, all right? Next, we cover testing, QA, and especially DevOps because, um, well, frankly, DevOps is uh, confusing for many of you and uh, we've been working with recruiters in, uh, in different countries and is just um, confusing across the board. Next, data, databases, business intelligence, super important for you guys uh, to know what are the differences between transactional database, data warehouse, business intelligence, who is a business intelligence analyst, who is a data engineer, who is a data scientist, like this all is covered in this training program. And the last module from the series GR10X, software design, web design, content management systems. Again, uh, to, 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 to get you guys uh, on, on the same page and have a full picture. Uh, the, the second step 
the second level of modules, um, GR20X, focuses on technical recruitment, recruitment tactics. We talk about, for example, GitHub. How to use GitHub to source developers? Uh, how to hire developers? How to attract them? And how to rewrite a boring, uh, well, relatively boring job description to be more attractive? And this is this is something we look at uh, as a part of these two modules. And now, if you if you look at the the, the steps again, you see we have also something for for more senior, for advanced um, recruiters. So say advanced IT recruitment. And um, what would I need to stress? Uh, we don't focus on soft skills at all because um, you guys most free well often often say most of you have already great soft skills at least from my experience but you lack this it it understanding so that's why we only focus on advanced it recruitment so um how to how to hire developers how to um how to hire back-end developers front-end developers you can actually see it right here so the modules uh, gr 3 weeks focus only on data data roles how to hire javascript etc but i'll not go deeper in this uh sense because um, um this is not included in this onboarding accelerator training program all right so I'll stop sharing for a while. So you guys see me again. Um, if, if you have any, well, there are already some questions. Oh, well, really cool. Thank you. Thank you. You guys um, ask um, how, uh, how often will we have these uh, live sessions? Well, let me, let me show it to you on this, on this timeline, okay? So uh, what we have prepared for you is a, is a series of uh so so this is a timeline right and we will have um live live sessions like this is a live session there will be another live session another live another live 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 meaning hey i'm here with you or some other instructor with you online answering your questions so uh it's great that you are already asking some questions because you need to get used to asking me questions online and it's actually easy because you just type a question in a chat window, right? But here, between these, between these live sessions, you will have um, you will have um, some assignments, some homework. Okay, so you will have something to study. One hundred and two, GR one hundred and three, GR one hundred and four, one hundred and five, one hundred and six, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> so um, we have prepared courses, video courses that you can watch between these live sessions you have uh, also some worksheets let me get another color like um there is also some worksheet so say this there is a video of course and the video is usually one to three hours plus uh, uh, worksheets that i would encourage you to print out you can print them out and you can uh, fill them in. Now, why is it important? Well, let me show you a sample worksheet. Do I have it here? Yeah, I have it here. <clears throat> so I need to share my screen again. So stay with me. Don't leave, guys. <clears throat> I'm sharing it, okay. <clears throat> so now you can see one of the worksheets. This is GR103, Technical Team Roles you can see that we have here a few questions prepared for you. Like for example, what are some of the popular entry roles and why? Why are the entry roles popular? Now, you, you may remember from the video, video training. If you don't remember, then you can also watch a video um, straight, straight away. So you can just uh, get your phone. As soon as you see a QR code, you just get your, your phone, you open your, your um, camera and then you um, then you well, hold a sec I need to change here QR code um, then you just scan the QR code like I'm just doing now it asks you if you are uh, if you want to redirect yeah I want to redirect and then a video with uh, with a particular module launches as you can see here the video with me talking about the entry roles 
Now, what are the entry rules to IT? How can uh, people outside of IT get to the IT world? Mm -hmm. So this is the video of me talking about the entry rules. Uh, there, could be, there could be different instructors. Uh, there could be maybe something else for you to understand the topic better. Uh, so uh, this is what uh, I would totally encourage you guys to, to go through. The, the worksheets are here and, and also quizzes that we have as a part of these uh, courses are here for you to increase the comprehension of, of what you just learned. So please don't just passively listen to me talking or, or the video content that you find, the on-demand video in the courses. But please, uh, please, please be a bit more proactive in... Um, filling in the worksheets because that's how you can learn, right? Um, so, uh, so uh, I cannot stress how important this really is. <clears throat> All right, I stop sharing it again. Oh, I just realized you couldn't see because I was sharing my screen. So, uh, let's say I try this again. Okay, so what you could see on my on my screen here. Is, is a video that opened after I scan the QR code, the video opens, and then you can play the video. This is uh, that people ask me when you see? I'm, um, in the panel discussion. Okay, and that's a video where you can just, you know, uh, watch it for three, four, five minutes, and then answer the question if you don't remember anymore, okay? So that's the question about the training plan, that there are 10 modules, and these modules are one-on-one. Well, in fact, Today, we will talk about uh, GR 101, so some of the introductory topics, like how to become a great um, IT recruiter, what are some of the uh, technical skills you need to have. This is something we will, we will talk about, well, clearly not about everything. Uh, the rest you can find in the course that you have already access to, all right? Now, maybe I could also show you um, how to how to find the courses because um, it may not be as straightforward as one would uh, like so let me open it here oh yeah it's this screen I'll start sharing it <clears throat> so now you can see um, the, the academy that you have access to uh, the Geek Culture Academy you can see here a home page um, if, if you would be part of, of some group then obviously you could see also um, um, also um, content from that particular group. Um, for now, what could be interesting for you is uh, the, the section in the sidebar courses. So if I click on courses, I see some of the courses like uh, GR101, GR104 here, okay? So um, if I would click, for example, on this GR101 course that you have already access to, you can see some of the some of the topics like here i talk about the shift in hr towards marketing and sales you know how how we shift from inbound recruitment to outbound outbound recruitment uh, what's the technical knowledge needed uh, what are the characteristics of a great it recruiter um steps to become a great recruiter like these are these are all the things um you can you can watch and i would strongly encourage you to to watch it if you for example Say, um, let's click here. You can you can play a video. It's really straightforward. I talk, okay, where I talk about recruitment. Okay, so uh, so this is just one of the courses. And then again, you click on courses, and you can see um, other courses. You can see also here. This is this is an archived course. This is a course. Uh, we, we changed based on the, the feedback from those who have already went through the course. Um, this is actually how we like to iterate. We like to iterate based on your feedback. So I would also appreciate your feedback. Even after this, uh, this live session, you can send me a message and like, hey, you know, I was lost or this was not clear or I don't know, sound was not good enough or maybe, maybe the video or whatever, you know, doesn't, meet your expectations, just let me know. I'm super happy to improve. That's what we do actually on a daily basis. <clears throat> Next, you can see, for example, the course GR103, Organizational Design and Teams. Again, one of the courses uh, that um, recruiters like so far a lot. 
we we talk about the, the structure of different teams, agile, uh, team patterns, uh, carry path and level and carry paths and levels, some of the digital team roles, uh, management roles. Okay, so uh, so this is this is really helpful. This course uh, is one of the longer ones. Uh, this particular one has uh, three hours of video content. So um, make sure you dedicate uh, enough time between these live sessions to study. All right. So I I stopped sharing. Uh, I see some more questions. Um, uh, so uh, the question about the replay, like of course there will be a replay uh, available. I know you guys may not be able to join every single session. That's um, understandable. If you can join a session, the next day a replay is available inside the uh, inside the academy. So what I could actually show you also um, is inside the academy we have we have certain groups. So if I go back to the network, um, you may not be actually part of any group. I'm I'm just um, showing you what we what we uh, do, what we can do. Um, we also onboard um, um, the whole teams. Like now, you are just part of uh, of a group training session. Right? Like the onboarding accelerator is great. This class is great for. Uh, for individuals or smaller teams, but we also work with larger teams like uh, say zero to one search is a company in uh, in uh, Germany we work with uh, 18 of their recruiters experts is uh, uh, it's, it's actually a manpower man, man company uh, we work with uh, the Czech team so a team from Czech Republic Eventa uh, is from uh, from Austria. Again, a group of IT recruiters from uh, a, a local uh, agency in Austria. So what we do with uh, these with these teams, we create a dedicated group inside the academy, where where we also share some of the replays. Uh, our instructors join their groups and provide additional feedback on job descriptions, et cetera, et cetera. So if, if you have maybe more colleagues and uh, you would consider, hey, maybe, maybe other colleagues could also benefit from this. Well, this is what we can do for you. And there are, there are like certainly more groups uh, we can create for your team members, all right? So I'm just uh, sharing this with you so you can see what is, uh, uh, what are some of the other products or services we organize for uh, for larger teams all right <clears throat> so what next um, so this was uh, the question about replays obviously so uh, so that uh, I, I just wanted to highlight the fact that inside the groups like obviously there are there are these replays for teams so even there is a new team member he or she can watch a replay as a part of his or her onboarding to IT recruitment, which is pretty cool. So uh, thanks a lot for this question about replays. Um, what else? Uh, I already answered the one about the training plan, uh, materials, if you have material, well, yeah, well, this is, this is what I meant by the worksheets, uh, right? Um, I'm just looking at the question about the materials, like the, the worksheets are the materials. That's the PDF that you can print out, so PDF, materials <clears throat> this is what you can print out you can um, you can uh, uh, print out um, and uh, and study eventually okay <clears throat> hope you guys can see it can you guys see it there's some uh, little reflection but you should be able able to see it Okay, so uh, if you guys have any question then uh, don't hesitate to to ask me Otherwise, I'll jump on some of these topics, okay? Okay, everything clear so far? Yeah, cool, cool. Hi, <laughs> okay, hey. thanks. Uh, keep, you, you guys may just, you know, keep, keep posting, keep writing in the chat. At least uh, I, see, I see you guys are online uh, watching this. If, uh, if you have any question, then just uh, type it there. All right, so next I would love to, to walk you through some of, the, uh, some of the topics from the course GR 101.
so that's the introductory courses and um we whenever whenever i i look at this training program this class what what do we do we really want you guys to become great it recruiters great it recruiters because in the past i was um i was literally frustrated and i'll i'll show you why i was frustrated well there is this um there is this clash between first it directors and recruiters like i used to be a cto and it director and um and um i i always hesitated working with with recruiters in thailand because uh, i saw how how they just didn't understand roles uh, that i tried to to fill but they couldn't understand much about technology so now with this training i would i would love to you know you guys get to a level where you can eventually be a partner to ctos so um, what what do we do here is um well let me just wipe this and um and show you the the, the path and so so uh first you need to become really great IT recruiter. Okay, and second, um, well, not all of you, but um, this is where you can really bring lots, lots of value is to become a partner to a CTO. Okay, a partner to a CTO. And now, whenever we work with uh, recruiters we look at it as a as, as a as a series of steps so first usually recruiters start as, as juniors so junior recruiters or say freshers with um, with not much background in IT it's literally um, the, the case of uh, some of you here um, I, I was uh, going through some of your profiles and um, you, some of you have been already working in HR, but not much in IT, you know, nothing in, in IT recruitment. And this is a huge, huge world. So looking at, um, say, why, why the cooperation between an IT director and a recruiter is inefficient, I'll share this slide with you. Okay, so uh, there is an IT director and a recruiter, and it's it's inefficient because um, recruiters um, just don't understand technology. So when I was a CTO, I, I I I saw that the recruiter knew nothing about building teams, couldn't bring me bring me some additional value besides besides uh, doing some research, besides uh, searching for recruiters. So I would say. The, the research sourcing sourcing is is helpful into some extent like certainly there is some value in in research in sourcing but you can get you can get further so research and sourcing uh, on linkedin say there is not much not much value in if you only use uh, linkedin as a as a sourcing tool because everyone uses LinkedIn. So you can use the same tool as someone else. Uh, you use the same search query like .NET developer. There is not much. Uh, you may have the recruiter uh, account on LinkedIn. Where you can go a step further is, for example, to, to start using GitHub or you can start using uh, uh, Slack communities. So you, you need to go a step further to bring more value, okay? And this is, this is how we look at uh, juniors, how we look at uh, the research and sourcing. How can you get better at, at research sourcing? Then next level, someone who already can, uh, can pair job descriptions to CVs. And uh, often this is straightforward, right? This, this may be straightforward if a client is looking for, uh, I'll stop sharing. So this is straightforward if a client is, um, looking for a c -sharp developer and a developer has written in his profile c -sharp developer. well that's a no-brainer right that's that's super straightforward 
But at some point, you need to bring a little more value and you need to start reading between the lines. So for example, if, if a client is looking for a .NET developer, then you immediately uh, need to know that you are looking for developers who have, for example, C-sharp or F-sharp in uh, their profiles. You, you need to be able to ask, uh, for example, questions related to the frameworks they use. Like, hey, are you looking for, for a mobile app developer? Are you looking for someone with uh, Xamarin experience, etc. Okay, so you start, you start pairing job descriptions to CVs and you, you get better at reading between the lines, okay? Now thinking about, um, for example, Java, and, and Kafka, you know, you, you need to have these mental connections um, um, so, so you, can, you can build queries that are not straightforward, that you know, other recruiters cannot build as easily as you can. And this is what we will also uh, teach you at Kikuta Academy. Next, um, next, I would say the, the, the recruiter who can connect to two databases, so first, first database, database of clients, and second database of, uh, of uh, developers. And here, you need to be able to, to ask uh, the client, the hiring manager, hey, who are you, who are you looking for? Um, and and figure, figure it out. And then you need to be able to also uh, search for the developer, um, interview the developer, and figure out if there is this uh, match. Okay, so you can already um, get a client, or at least you know you have a database of clients, so you can approach the client and developers and match them together. So you are no longer just you know pairing JDs and CVs. So you have like oh okay, there is a match here, there's not match here, but you go a step further and you can approach clients, you can approach developers, you can interview them. You are confident in this, and the word confident, I would say. Is, uh, is important because often uh, the recruiters we work with um, lack confidence precisely because they don't know what to ask a hiring manager, or they don't know how to interview a developer. So, um, so this is what we also include in this training program. And the last step is uh, becoming this um, end to end, end to end, uh, say business partner, to uh, CTO. Okay, so here you can go even a step further and you can advise the, the CTO based on your experience, based on how you see the market evolving, based on um, your knowledge of uh, building um, technical teams. We, we also teach here, for example, what are the differences between crafters and makers. So you can also advise a CTO like, hey, I, I see your project needs a maker, so, uh, so this person, even though he or she fits the skill, skills required, may not be a good fit because this person is, uh, is a crafter. He or she likes to build really nice code, um, likes to test everything properly, likes to you know, like deliver everything 100%, but what you need for this particular project is someone who can just execute, who has drive, who, um, doesn't care much about coding standards, but can deliver some prototype quickly. Okay, so so here we teach in the very last uh, set of uh, modules how can you figure out what does the CTO wants or needs, and this comes back to my experience with with recruiters. Like this is a person I I wanted. This is a person I needed. And the person never came. So uh, with this training, I hope I will train you guys to be these uh, these recruiters because you can you can just go you know step by step higher in this uh, say career career ladder, and um, you can you can become great at uh, recruitment, uh, building teams, uh, etc. Okay. So do you, have, do you have any questions uh, about this particular topic? If yes, please go ahead and ask me questions in this uh, chat window. I'm just looking there. There is no question related to this. <clears throat> I'll give you a moment. 
if you are typing, I actually cannot see if you are typing or not. Seems like you are not typing anything, so I'll just continue, okay? <clears throat> so level one, become great IT recruiter, and then become a partner to a CTO. So now, what does it mean to become a great IT recruiter, you may ask? Okay, well, who is, who is a great IT recruiter? Hmm? No, I'm asking you, okay? Now, I'm asking you, let's make it a, a bit more uh, engaging. So, I'm asking you, who is a great IT recruiter? And while, while I wipe the whiteboard, please uh, uh, use, use the chat to answer the question, who is a great IT recruiter? I'll wipe slowly, okay? I'm wiping really slowly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so someone who knows the programming languages, very cool. So I uh, knows programming programming languages. Okay, what else? Frameworks. Well, clearly, okay, knows frameworks. And here I would add, it's it's uh, not enough just to know, just to be aware. For example, there is uh, a cake page, PYEs and Symfony. I'm just looking uh, at the middle here. But you need to also know which frameworks are trending. You need to know which frameworks are already obsolete. You need to know which frameworks relate to each other. So you, you know, for example, if a company is looking for a PHP developer using uh, Symfony framework, then you can you can maybe also um, forward them someone who who um, works with Laravel because they are um, close to each other. It's not like uh, the same, but a developer can learn it, especially a senior developer can learn it uh, rather quickly. Okay, what else? Who is a great IT recruiter? What does he or she know? Okay, so programming languages we have, frameworks we have. Okay, what else? Methodologies, yes, great. Methodologies. Mm -hmm. So a great IT recruiter needs to be aware of all these methodologies like uh, Scrum, Kanban. Um, so um, this is what I actually already mentioned in one of our modules. So we covered this, which is great. You will learn about this. Mm -hmm. So knows the developers' roles. Okay, thanks for thanks for this tip. Knows developer roles, and I would say actually not just developer roles, but um, the differences between a system analyst and business analyst, uh, a difference between a project manager and product manager, a difference between a UX designer and UI designer. Like all these all these differences, uh, a product manager and project manager, CTO versus CIO. Like this is everything you guys need to know so you can hire these roles with confidence. Mm -hmm. Principles, yes, principles. By principles, uh, you most likely mean principles like dry and kiss and all these principles that uh, developers um, sometimes write in their profiles on LinkedIn. Um, like they are big fans of these principles, uh, like dry, for example, don't repeat yourself, kiss, um, keep it simple, stupid. But this is actually quite quite interesting. Well, just uh, recently we talked uh, with uh, with Vlad about how can these principles, these development principles, be applied in um, recruitment especially when you guys create job descriptions. So for example, don't repeat yourself is one of the principles. Um, just looking at C, uh, job descriptions, I can often see some of the, some of the um, requirements or some of the tasks, uh, some of the um, benefits just repeating uh, again and again. This is not what developers would, would uh, recommend when they write their code, right? Like they recommend 
to don't repeat themselves. So um, uh, we are also looking at this uh, through this through these lenses. Like, how can we uh, change job descriptions? How can we rephrase? How can we shorten them? How can we actually make an advertisement that is uh, 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 shorter and more um, um, precise, more attractive to developers. So that was just a side note about principles. Okay, <clears throat> so I just on a high level, I'll not go, uh, I, I'll not go deeper because you will anyways uh, watch the video in the course GR101 where we look at it a bit deeper. What does an IT recruiter need to know? Obviously programming languages, frameworks, methodologies, roles, principles, but also maybe best practices I would also add here best practices best practices uh, in software software development okay so i'll wipe it again <clears throat> okay so thanks again for these questions sorry not questions but um, um input to to my question now, looking at the agenda, we, um, we talked about the training plan, we talked about, uh, um, about the different steps, how can, how can you actually go from, from a researcher to a full end-to-end -end partner. We, we talked about who, who is a great IT recruiter, even though we didn't really go deep, like what are the characteristics of a great recruiter. This is what you will learn inside the academy. What I would like to highlight is especially the, the shift in recruitment. And this shift is something I've noticed um, years ago when I was recruiting as a CTO to my team. I noticed how the, the recruitment, recruitment shifts from inbound To outbound and by now you are not you are not surprised by any means right most likely you are approaching developers already I just remember this maybe five six years ago it was enough just to uh, just to post a job description online and wait two weeks three weeks uh, developers uh, uh, developers applied and boom that was it but now we need to approach them. We need to approach them. Um, maybe you approach developers on LinkedIn. Maybe you send emails. Maybe you send emails on LinkedIn. Um, the, the question is, how can you approach them effectively? And by effectively, I mean, uh, well, you need to know how to attract them. You need to know how to get them excited about the opportunity you present them, okay? So um, the shift from inbound to outbound is more related to, to say, marketing and sales. Here, it, it was more about uh, administration. Administration. Uh, because um, you just received applications and then you sort of uh, um, process them and uh, forward it to, um, to a hiring manager. And that's, that was it. I remember this uh, very well. But then we started shifting to, to proactively marketing the company. Uh, the company I was, uh, I was a co-founder, we, we were proactively marketing to developers. We, uh, we shifted our mindset. We also in, included uh, a marketing team to help us uh, adjust the job description to be more attractive. And that, that was when I realized like, hey, there is this fundamental shift and there is something wrong with job descriptions. Now, what is wrong with job descriptions? I'll get to this, okay? I'll, I'll, make, a, I'll make a note so I don't forget um, what's wrong with job descriptions with uh, JDs. So I don't uh, change topic um, right now. I'll talk about it in a sec, okay? So we, st we started shifting more to marketing and sales because as soon as we marketed, as soon as we changed how we, how we present the job opportunity, 
how we advertise it. We, we started advertising the job opportunities. We, we changed the way we talked about the role. We included more video content, more testimonials, more about the team, more about the environment, and less about the skills required. But still, if you look at uh, most of the uh, job descriptions um, out there today, it's mostly about uh, the skills required. We are looking for a C-sharp developer. He needs to be a senior in uh, you know, whatever uh, um, technology, well, C-sharp, uh, .NET framework. He needs to know um, this or that. Okay, so uh, we only focus on skills. But when you focus more on, on the marketing aspect, it's more about uh, the environment. It's more about the opportunity. It's more about uh, the team. And then the developer can get excited. Obviously, as soon as you attract developers, you need to be able to sell this opportunity. And, um, and then we also started thinking more about uh, how can we actually sell this? How can we get people to relocate from uh, different countries to where, where we were based in Southeast Asia, how can we actually sell them this opportunity? So we also shifted our mindset more to, to, to sales. And uh, some, of the, some of the agencies, some of the IT recruitment agencies we work with, literally call their recruiters as a sales, sales people, sales team, because at the end of the day, you are selling, right? So you are in sales, uh, whether you want or not. So uh, this, this is where you guys can bring more value. Um, if, you, if you get really great at marketing and sales, so you can market the opportunities, market the, the positions, and then you can close it. You can sell, sell it to developers. Now, in order to be able to market it properly, you need to know what developers are interested in, what do they um, like, what do they prefer, you need to know how to cl how to close it, um, how to how to get them, um, how to follow up, how to cold call maybe. Okay, so this is everything you guys need to get better at, and we are here to help you. The third important aspect is technology. Okay, so your technical technical knowledge, technical skills. You, you also need to be tech savvy in to a large extent, but you also need to have a strong technical foundation. So that's what we already talked about. You need to know the, the frameworks, programming languages. You need to know what is cool, what is hyped, because only then you can, you can market it properly, right? And, and you can sell it properly. Because you will know, for example, that a company X uses uh, some cool new framework so so that could be the teaser for for developers okay so you need to know more about technologies you need to know uh, about the programming languages frameworks you need to have a solid technical understanding okay so this is <clears throat> this is how we think about recruitment the shift from inbound to outbound uh, recruitment and in order to be really great at inbound uh, sorry outbound recruitment you need to improve your marketing and sales skills and obviously the technical knowledge is a must so that's also how we uh, how we think about uh, job descriptions here at Geekerture. i'll show you a, an example in a while okay how can we adjust some of the job descriptions how can we rephrase how can we make it more attractive okay now the thing i i just uh, wanted to follow up on is, uh, is what's wrong with job descriptions. Let me, let me check if there are no questions related, no. <clears throat> so what's wrong with job descriptions? And I was, I was just thinking about this, like why, why job descriptions um, uh, are so bad um, across the board? And I think, I think it's because um, job descriptions are meant to be used internally. 
even even when I was a CTO, like uh, we had we had about ninety people in our company. We had lots of job descriptions. We have job descriptions to describe what a person works on in 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 the company internally. Okay, so the purpose number one is internal. And here it's, it's really beneficial to write what are the responsibilities, what the developer will, will work on, what kind of systems he or she will work on, maybe what projects he or she will work on, um, etc. Okay, so it's good to be detailed here. The second purpose of a job description is uh, external. And um, usually what happens is um, and someone from HR asks uh, a hiring manager or a CTO, hey, uh, you, you, you need um, another um, backend developer. Can you please forward us some of the job descriptions you know, that are already used internally? And the CTO says, like, yeah, obviously, like I have here one or two job descriptions, so I'll just forward it to you. And then the, the HR, HR person forwards it to you an IT recruiter and you without any much adjustments you just post it online so here here it is um, somewhere online on uh, on one of those job portals what is what is meant to be used for internal purposes it's not like it's confidential like you can you can but it's not advertisement here the, this should be advertisement advertisement and this this should not be advertisement this should be um what, what it should be this this is um yeah i don't have any any correct label maybe uh, at this point but the point is that this should be advertisement and as soon as you start thinking about uh, about about advertisement you you start thinking like hey how can we really advertise it what is a good advertisement? What does a good advertisement look like? And then first, first marketing principle is you need to know who you are talking to. Who is the persona? What are their desires? What are their fears, obviously, right? And then you, you adjust the piece of marketing content, the message to that persona. And this is precisely what you guys need to do with this advertisement role advertisement i could i could write here this is a role advertisement okay this is a role advertisement so here these two can be totally different you don't need to write about um, some obvious obvious um, requirements like here it's good to mention as a software developer you will work on um, building new systems or maintaining um, um, existing ones right because this is what you are supposed to work on when you are eight hours at work but when you advertise it and you advertise a, say a role description or you advertise a role of a mobile app developer well then why why would you describe that you are looking for someone to build mobile apps or adjust existing apps like you can you can remove all all this fluff because it's obvious right also, um, in a say advertisement for a new car, they don't write, um, "Hey, uh, we offer a car that can drive on the road, and uh, you can park with the car in your garage." Like these, these things are obvious, right? So you just skip it because it's obvious. And this is what I think is missing when when you guys create this advertisement, this role advertisement. So we will practice this, uh, and even even um, in a while. Okay, we will start in a while with an example so you can see uh, how, how do we even think about this. And again, in order for you to create a good advertisement, you need to know more about marketing, how to think about um, role descriptions, how to, how to adjust it, how to add something interesting um, related to technology. Okay, <clears throat> cool. So uh, this is this is what I wanted to highlight. Like, what's what's wrong with uh, job descriptions? It's it's wrong because what's supposed to be used internally is used externally, and then it's just full of fluff. So I'll show you a few examples. Okay. 
But before, before I show you these examples, I would love to present you our really simple framework. And um, the framework lists a few areas we like to, to, to focus on. So I'll share my screen again. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> so this screen, you can see um, how, do we, how do we even think about a great job description. So you can see here um, some of the, say some of the attributes are, are obvious, right, a company. But again, how, to, how do you describe a company? We see so often written, hey, you know, this is a company uh, that is based in Salzburg. And that's it, right? It's, it's not about the company, it's more about the location, but there is nothing about the company. What the developers want to know is more about uh, the, the type of the company. Is it a corporation or is it an agency? Is it a startup? And if it is a startup, is it a funded startup? This is important for developers because based on these, um, these, these um, say, types of companies, they already have some, some expectations. A corporation, more stable. An agency, more, uh, more client work, so projects uh, change more frequently. For some of them, it's great. Some developers uh, don't uh, prefer it. Startup, great for those who are keen to learn and grow. Okay, so, so this is also how you need to think about it. Team. Actually, team is, uh, is often um, the most important decision-making factor for developers because having a strong team means lots of opportunities for growth. Uh, so what, what is the size of a team? What is the structure of the team? Are they um, agile? Is this an agile team? Or you know, now we are shifting more towards methodology, but it, it also um, could, um, could differ team to team. So in one company, one team could uh, run agile projects, the other could run waterfall projects. So it's, it's also good to, uh, to define this in the role advertisement. Hey, we are looking for someone who will join a team of five um, senior developers in, in an agency to deliver a project within six months. And then this is like, wow, this is so much more interesting than a raw advertisement full of fluff. Next, projects. Um, developers just want to know what kind of projects are they um, supposed to work on? Um, will they work only on one project or more projects at the same time? Some developers uh, don't like to, um, to spread thin. Some, some like to focus on one project only. Tech <clears throat> technologies we already discussed. Uh, you need to focus on, on versions. So if, for example, um, again, if I, if I mentioned the example with PHP, if there is a company using PHP 7, that's great, mention it. If the company uh, still runs on PHP 5.6, well then maybe don't mention it because uh, it's not the coolest thing out there. Okay, so you need to know what is cool. If it is, if it is cool, uh, then mention it. If it is not, but then maybe just leave it out. Growth potential, um, it's related to, to the team. Um, is, is there anyone senior in the team, someone who can mentor this uh, person? This aspect is often important for developers, especially because uh, in IT, everything changes so quickly. So developers need to learn, they need to upskill themselves uh, on an ongoing uh, basis, continuous, continuous learning. Often I see a job description where they're looking just for a software developer. It's maybe because they're looking for both a junior and a senior, so they just uh, remove junior and senior and they are just looking for a software developer. But whenever I talk to, uh, to developers, they, uh, they just want to know, hey, are they looking for a junior or a senior or a mediator? Are they looking for me? Coming back to the marketing principle, it's, it's always good to personalize, right? And you can only personalize if, um, if, if, if you know who are you looking for and, um, and, and that's the way how you can, uh, you can eventually 
get them attracted. Location, home office, well, some of them, some of these are, are obvious, so I'll just skip them for now. We will talk about this framework uh, in the next sessions. Personality, uh, this comes down to what we discussed about the last stage, uh, the, the end-to-end partner where you can advise, uh, where, where you can, um, for example, advise a CTO, hey, don't uh, hire this maker because you are looking for a crafter and maybe a CTO wasn't even thinking about it this way. So you need to go, go deeper and not just, not just um, hire based on skills, but also based on abilities and, uh, and personality, okay, and preferences. So this is, this is the framework we like to apply whenever we look at uh, a job description and uh, whenever we um, review job descriptions. Okay, so this is what we are going to uh, to do more often and during every um, session. We can look at some of the job descriptions and also feel free to send me a sample a JD that you would like to, to review. Um, I can ask uh, some of my colleagues also to help uh, with this. So uh, it's not just me um, going through that all, okay? <clears throat> so now we can look at, <clears throat> sorry. So now we can look at, um, at the first JD, so you at least have an idea what I'm talking about. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm sharing uh, the first job description. Here you can see a job description where they're looking for a database, uh, reporting database specialist. And um, what is interesting is, you know, who is a reporting database specialist? It's like someone in a, in a data warehouse, someone in a corporation maybe, someone who analyzes data, some like analyst, you know, reporting analyst, business intelligence analyst. And those developers often don't, need any database administration skills because those are completely different different roles database administration is for for different um, uh, different person right uh, together with database performance tuning so to list this as a requirement is um, is a mistake in my in my opinion and this could be a reason why less people apply eventually because say if i would be a reporting database specialist i would be thinking like oh my god like i know nothing about database administration I know nothing about database performance tuning. I, I should not really apply. But in fact, most likely you would not even need to, um, to, to do anything with databases because there is a different uh, team, a team of uh, database administrators who work on this uh, full time. Next, next example, C, C++ uh, software developer. So now let's look at the uh, second job description. For example, here they're looking for a C, C++ software developer. Now say, imagine you would be a C++ developer, like is there anything that would attract you? And imagine this uh, C++ developer gets 10, 50 other job offers every week. Like there is nothing um, that uh, could attract this uh, C++ developer, right? We are looking for a C++ developer. We need some, uh, someone English speaking. It doesn't matter if you are checked in or, or not. Job description, you know, work on IPM infra project. Well, if, if this would be at least some technology, something interesting, but this is um, just the name of some project. We, we have no clue about uh, this project, what, what that is, right? Um, infra project as a part of international team. Uh, you, you ramp up on from day one, be part of continuous universe crowd, like nothing really interesting. So we need, to, we need to think about this as an advertisement. How can we advertise this role better? How can we tell more about the team? Is the C++ developer joining a team of uh, three, five, 10 people? Are they senior? Where are they actually based? It's in Prague, I know, but are they based in, say northern Prague or, or southern Prague, like developers these days don't want to commute more than 20 minutes. So um, why not to make it clear upfront? Um, why, why, not to, why not to at least say, you know, the distance from some landmark or some metro station, etc. All right. 
Looking at the third uh, job description, I see a JD for a senior, soft, uh, senior JavaScript developer. What is interesting is here they are looking for someone with experience with version control system. Again, like there is nothing wrong about this, especially when they mention Git, it's, it's okay, but it just brings no value, no, no added value, because every senior JavaScript developer knows Git already. Experience with version control system means nothing because um, a developer can say, "Hey, I just you know committed uh, yesterday some, some something to Git, so I have experience." It's not like um, it, it's not qua, qua, um, qualitative experience, sorry, quantitative experience. Like, what what does it really mean? So, um, it's just this is just you know fluff. This doesn't bring any value. This is obvious. Similar with uh, Bootstrap, CSS, HTML5. Like these are some of the technologies that are, say, obvious for senior JavaScript developers. So why to why to even write there? Similar with the cars, you don't you don't write in another that like, hey, this car drives on the road, you know, because it's obvious. It's a car. It drives on the road, obviously, right? So um, so you need to think about it, like about an advertisement. And this is what we will practice more and more. We will teach you some of the technologies so you know what is connected to which technology and then how can you rewrite it to create more exciting job descriptions? How can you make it more, more salesy? How can you make it more, more interesting? How can you attract developers uh, a little further, okay? So these were just, just three um, JDs to show you, um, to show you what uh, what could be what could be possible as soon as you learn more about technologies, about marketing, about sales. Eventually, we can call to call because you know there is nothing much that can surprise you. We will give you uh, hands out. We will give you some of the scripts that you can use during a discussion with a developer. So I hope that this training will be beneficial for you as an as an IT recruiter. Okay. We, we train recruiters in different countries, so this training is uh, all in English. I hope you are fine with that. Um, so um, that's, that's all I wanted to mention in regards to the training. We talked about uh, the training plan. We talked about how to become a great recruiter. We talked about the different steps. What is the technical knowledge uh, needed? We looked at the technology map really briefly, right? We will download the PDF. We looked at how can we, how can we improve job descriptions? How can we even create an advertisement, okay? Instead of just taking whatever the company um, uses internally. We looked at three, three example JDs after we um, after I presented you the framework. So uh, we, we covered everything I, I wanted. And uh, now there is a space for one question, which I already see there for, for a while. So um, it's um, for those of you who cannot read the question, the question is uh, related to, uh, to jQuery. So what about jQuery in, uh, so uh, let me uh, share these okay so the question is <clears throat> what about jQuery here in requirements so um whenever well I would actually not write jQuery here in this advertisement because um it, it could be that um, a developer will will write jQuery you know it's it's uh, it's just a library a developer may use 20 other libraries and we don't list them so why to why to write about jQuery? The question would be, is a developer required to write the code, new code in jQuery, or is he only supposed to fix uh, as soon as there is a bug in already existing system? And this is, there is a substantial difference because um, say jQuery is already fading out. It's not one of the hottest technologies out there, right? So, um, so developers don't love jQuery anymore. Um, jQuery peaked maybe three, four, five years ago, and now now it's uh, fading out a bit. So um, 
but having said that, lots of lots of code uses jQuery. So if a developer joins a company, it's likely there is some code base that uses jQuery. But there is nothing wrong about it, right? Like a developer can come, he just fixes it, improves it, you know, whatever. So, so for this, I would not even list jQuery here because um, it's just not a, say it's it's one of those common language libraries uh, or common it's in it's in a bucket with common libraries for senior JavaScript developers. Obviously, it's, it's like. Um, say a Python developer may not know jQuery, but a senior JavaScript developer is likely to know jQuery, and uh, it can it can just uh, say um, um, repel a bit developers because they may assume new code will be written in jQuery. So I would I would maybe rephrase it to make it more attractive, and and we could rephrase it in a way that. This, this company, this team shifts from the code base in jQuery and they have a new project uh, kicked off uh, using Angular. Okay, and this way you actually present that there is something written in jQuery, which is okay, but they shift to Angular, which is, uh, which is cool and hyped these days. So, so this is the way, how can you rephrase it? How can you make it more attractive? Remove the fluff, focus on what matters and make it more attractive. Hope that uh, answers your question. Yeah, thanks. Okay, cool, cool. Great. I, I think uh, we could uh, we could wrap it up unless you guys have some more questions. I'm I'm glad um, you were active during this very first uh, live session during this webinar uh, during this live class. I'm uh, I'm glad you were able to join from uh, different countries. I'm glad uh, everything worked out. We were here on time. We started. As, as we were supposed to. Uh, you guys asked questions, which is really cool. So um, I would wrap it up here. What is important, thinking about the, uh, the, the training plan. Now you have access to the training academy, right? So um, you are expected to, uh, to, to go through the video courses, GR101 and 102. So GR101 focuses on what we just talked about. It goes a little, little deeper. And 102 focuses on a software development um, um, methodologies and, um, and life cycle. So uh, you, guys, uh, you guys watch this course so we can discuss it. I can answer your questions during the next session. And during the next session, you need to have uh, many more questions because you are already prepared and I will, I will mostly answer your questions, okay? So that will be fun. It is usually fun with uh, recruiters that we train. So I hope that will be also fun with you during these sessions. So I'll wrap it up here. Thanks again for being here with me today. Thanks again for, for having the time, for joining us. Thanks again for your questions. And I'm looking forward to our next live session in two weeks. Have a great day, everyone.